Hey guys, welcome to part five of the Making of a Bridal Gown series. Now, last time, I know it was quite a while ago, and uh, I thank you guys for sticking with me on this project, but I think we finished putting the lace onto the mini skirt underneath and attached the plain bodice um, without lace to the skirt. Um, I had done the straps, but we're gonna go through that now. Um, when I do spaghetti straps, I like to stretch it out with um, some steam to sort of eliminate um, any additional stretching that might happen with wear. So I do that and I give it a little press as well, folding it in half to where I'm gonna sew it just to make sure that it's nice and straight for when I sew. And um, what I like to do is start with like a funnel shape at the, up at the top, it makes it easier for turning. And I actually use my seam allowance marks there on my, uh, on my presser plate um, to do the width of the spaghetti strap. And I just find that a lot easier than having to judge by the seam allowance because I start with quite a large piece and then again I'll do that funnel at the end. Now I couldn't do spaghetti straps without a loop turner. It is so useful <laughs> when you're doing these thin little spaghetti straps. So you just kind of hook it in the end and you pull that metal piece through and it will turn out your strap pretty nicely. And I just give it a little, another steam, sort of roll it with my fingertips to get that seam in the same spot because you don't want it twisting on you or um, showing on the wrong side there. So yeah, now it's nice and flat and I'm gonna go ahead and attach it to the middle of my bodice where it's gonna go in the, in the shoulder there. So the next part of this dress is we're gonna have to make a facing. Since I've done alterations on the bodice, I'm gonna need to redo some straps. And you could do this by doing a paper first, but I've got the muslin pieces right here, so I'm just tracing over the shape of the bodice front and back and um, trace those out and cut them out. And now I'm putting a fuse uh, interfacing on the facing interfacing on the facing <laughs> uh, with just some light steam and some firm pressing. This is the front piece so um, this will attach to the back eventually. Um, to prep for this we're gonna need to close up that lining that we left kind of loose in the last video if I recall. Um, we have to now base that shut matching up to where we sewed it um, in the first piece of the bodice there. Um, that's all in the previous video if you want to go check that out. I'm also clipping my edge and you'll notice it's turned under a little bit. Um, and for this I'm testing where we're gonna put those straps and making sure it lies straight. Once you figure that out you can just pretty much sew on the strap where you want it. And the facing we're gonna um, stay stitch both edges with a nice uh, short stitch right along the edge of the seam allowance. Okay, so that's the neck edge done, all stay stitched. Now we're gonna do the same thing um, along the bottom edge because this part is gonna be just pinked as a seam finish so that uh, it doesn't fray. Because it is interfaced, it should stay pretty secure that way. Um, you can also serge it if you have a serger. But we're going with a nice sort of handmade look for the inside of this dress, so I was really excited to do something a little different. Um, and this is now the back piece. I'm keeping them separate for now um, because it will be easier to attach onto the dress. Um, which we're gonna do right now. So I'm gonna start with the back piece here and we'll just give it a nice pin um, Attach it to Where it finishes right um, and then this front piece is just gonna overlap that back piece a little bit and Judging by how much it overlaps. That's where we're gonna hand um, turn it under and secure it there by hand just because um, 
but it was easier to do that way. Um, you can also attach it if you want, but I just figured I would judge how much it was going to overlap and do a nice finish to it that way because the curve and the angle is quite awkward. <laughs> so we're going to do that. Um, stitch at a regular length here. Um, you notice I do sew over my pins sometimes. Um, I don't usually have a problem with it. Um, they're thin pins and um, you know it is a bad habit but um, I don't usually have problems with it. So. Um, just be careful, <laughs> you know? Sometimes you can get the pins sort of pressing into your fabric and making a mark, so you wanna be careful just if you're doing a delicate fabric like a silk or a velvet or something that's gonna leave a mark on the right side, you don't want to do that. And so right now I'm, I've turned under one side of that facing to make a nice, um, clean finish on the one side um, and we'll finish it up here but I'm also going across our strap so that it makes a nice point there's a lot of excess there so we're gonna have to do a lot of trimming there's a lot of layers here a lot of seams cross seams that we're gonna have to tidy up so that's what I'm doing now you can see all the lining and then the facing um, so I'm pretty much just trimming that right down to about a quarter inch just getting rid of all that bulk. It's gonna make it turn under quite uh, nice. Um, yeah, just doing that, getting rid of basically the facing layer and the lining. I like to leave the um, outside layer just cause uh, it's, it's not really necessary to do the whole thing. And you saw me clip the curve as well there and right now I'm trimming right up to the point of our strap. Um, that's where you do want to go through both, um, all layers actually, to um, get it nice and trimmed down and clean because that's going to have to go really, really tightly into a point. Um, so I'm doing the neck, I believe, here. Getting right to the point that's in the center front and we're gonna clip right to our little double secured um, back stitch at our neckline at the point that should be um, extra stitched there so that you don't um, uh, tear through it um, you want to get really close to it that's why but um, so make that extra strong uh, now we're gonna turn it over and we're going to give it a nice press. Um, if it isn't pressing very nicely, you can open the seam on the inside and that will give you a nice, a cleaner finish to the outside. Uh, the lining can stay a little bit below the outer layer. I'm trying to get that point nice and flat, uh, giving it a good press so you can, you can re, re flip it over and get it nice and trim to, um, get it as flat as possible. So now I'm going to take my pinking shears, which I'm so glad I got to use <laughs> to finish that facing edge. And we're going to do a little underside catch stitch here to it so that the facing stays down. And we're going to do that all the way along the facing. The stitch is done uh, working right to left and you do one stitch on the lining and one stitch on the facing, not penetrating through the entire garment so that it's completely clean on the right side of your garment. Um, yeah, it just makes a nice invisible stitch. Um, that's why they call it blind catch stitch. After that's done, we're ready to put on the lace and we'll continue this lesson in the next part. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.